What you'll need today is your mat, the ball, and then if you need any kind of padding for knees, because we will be doing some kneeling work. So are you always okay? You don't need anything. So maybe have a towel or a blanket handy for yourself. And then as always, if I'm sitting cross-legged, I need to sit on a block. So it's up to you if you want to have a block available to you or not. Um, and then I'm just going to mute all the background noise. If anybody else joins in, I'll just hop off my mat and I will admit them into the room. All right. So guys, we're going to start seated today in a cross-legged position. So you can have the ball just available to yourself. I'm just going to turn to sit facing you. You can face any direction you want. But what I would like you to do is to bring your left foot in front first and then the right foot in front of that. And just pull the flesh of your bum out the back so you really feel like you're getting up high on those sit bones. And then placing your hands onto your knees, just do a few little gentle twists of your spine. Maybe looking over your shoulder gently. And then come to the center, and then maybe do a few little side bends. And come back to the center, roll your shoulders back and around a few times. And then just let your arms and your shoulders settle. Find a little bit of length up along the back of your neck. And then you can either just focus your gaze down and soften your eyelids, or you are very welcome to close your eyes completely. And just for the first few moments of class today, we are going to be breathing in and out through the nostrils. So lightly sealing your lips. And we consciously and deliberately connect into our breath, noticing each inhale and each exhale. Noticing the gentle energy running up your spine. And as that energy supports your body upright, you have an opportunity to allow your belly to just softly move with your breath. Take a moment before we start moving in our class to scan your body, noticing how you feel this morning, noticing any areas of tension or tightness. And turning your gaze inwards, observing your energy. Noticing how your energy feels today. Allowing your eyes to melt backwards into your head. Softening your forehead and your eyebrows. Softening along the tops of your cheeks, your jaw, your lips, and your tongue. We're going to take one more deep breath in through the nose. Hold your breath at the top for a moment. 
containing your energy. And on your next breath, open your mouth and sigh out. Blinking your eyes open gently. And we're going to take both arms, reaching them all the way up. Inhale. And on your next breath, bringing your fingertips just down in front of you. And this might be the position that you hold right here. Or you might be able to walk your hands forward so you're flat on your palms. You might be able to walk your hands even more forward. And if you are super duper flexible, you might even be able to let your elbows rest down. But as you stay here for a moment and getting that release around the hips and maybe across your lower back, just making sure that your ankles, your feet, your knees, your neck and shoulders are at ease. There's no strain or pain as you come into this forward release. And as we stay here, bring your awareness to the back of your ribs, the back of your lungs, the back of your heart. Taking one more gentle breath in and out. And then start to walk your hands all the way up slowly. Bringing your spine upright. And then taking your right leg, just help yourself unfold it and place that foot flat so your knee is open slightly. Place your left fingertips just a little bit behind you. Press your right elbow against your knee, lift up through your spine, and then start rotating towards the left. So this is an open twist. Feeling that release into the right inner thigh, finding the height of your spine, and just allow your breath, each inhale and each exhale, starts to release you from the inside out those deepest layers of fascia around your belly, your lungs, your diaphragm, your pelvic floor. And then on your next breath, release yourself back towards the center and now unfold that right leg all the way towards the side. Make any adjustments you need. You want to really feel that you're sitting evenly on those bum cheeks. Flexing your right foot, you're going to put your right hand just to the outside of your knee, and we're going to draw a little bit of a circle with the hand. So your left hand comes forward, up, hold for a moment, and then release, and come all the way up. And again, we sweep fingertips towards the heel. Lift up so you're opening up the side of the body. And then let yourself reverse it. And coming up two more times. So it's almost like you're tracing your fingers on the inside of your leg. And then the energy through your fingertips draws you up. You should feel quite a lucky release along the side of your body, along the left rib cage. And just keep breathing. Whatever feels natural for you, release and coming all the way up. Now unfold that left leg up towards the side. You're going to assist yourself. So I'm still up on my own. I'm going to stay here. You can either put fingertips behind you or you can start to bring your hands forward. And once again, we come forward. Make sure your hands are supporting you. Lengthen. If you're super duper flexible, maybe you want to come down onto the forearms, but again, it's not forcing the position. So you guys probably recognize this from the yin class that we did the other day. This is called the dragonfly. And in Pilates, which is what we call it the straddle sit. So we're not going to hold it as long as a yin class, but it's such a wonderful release for the inner thighs plus along the back of the legs into the hamstrings. So keep creating space along your spine. That's it. So it's not about folding over, it's about lengthening. And then on your next breath, 
Start to roll yourself all the way back up. And now bring your right leg in front first, then your left leg. You can make any adjustments you need to your position right here. We're going to inhale, reach all the way up. And then exhale, bring the fingertips down, and then decide how far you're going to go. So, even though we're doing the same forward fold that we did two seconds ago with our legs to the side, you can probably feel that it's registering in quite a different part of your body because you're sitting in this cross-legged position. So this is called the tailor's pose. This is how tailors used to sit, and in some cultures still do sit. So it's quite a wonderful opening around the hips. Maybe an opening across the lower back. And remember, we've got a lot of fascia across the sacrum and the lower back. Stay connected into your breath. Each inhale and each exhale. Then on our next breath, start to roll your hands all the way back. Finding a little bit of height and length through the spine. And now, help yourself as you bring the left foot onto the ground. Placing your right fingertips just a little bit behind you, left elbow to the inside of the knee, sit up nice and tall, and then start rotating towards the right, so it's an open twist. And you're going to be feeling it maybe in the inner thigh, if you have any kind of tightness there. And notice again how your breath expands you from the inside out. It actually allows you to naturally deepen the twist without pushing. And on your next breath, bringing yourself back to the center and again, help yourself. Unfold your left leg out to the side. Make any adjustments you need, flexing that left foot. Left hand goes to the side of the leg. Right fingertips slowly. And then continue coming all the way up, opening the side of the body, and then release and reverse. And again. And opening up, ribcage, all those muscles around the ribs, your lungs. Two more, the diaphragm. All those muscles down the side of the body, like the obliques of those lower back muscles. One more time. And again, how does this right side feel in comparison? I feel that my right side, funny enough, has less range than my left. Coming all the way up. Once again, unfold that right leg to the side and lifting yourself up from the back. And if you feel comfortable to do so, move your fingertips to the front and then start to lengthen forward. So as much as possible, slide your shoulder blades down your back. So you really feel that opening across the heart and across the lungs here. Energy through the heels of your feet. And we're going to stay here for three more breaths and just notice if you're able to come a little bit deeper. Allow yourself to sink a bit deeper if that's accessible to you. And we're taking one more breath in. And then slowly coming all the way back up. Hooking your hands just behind your knees. Help yourself as you bend the knees. Bring your feet together. Now this is where I come off the block so that I don't fall down. <laughs> ourselves into a tight little ball shape and if you'd like to challenge your balance you could close your eyes perhaps notice that gentle rocking just behind your sit bones and on your next breath releasing your feet all the way down and come onto all fours so just having your massage ball next to you, you can use it in a few moments. We're going to come into a cat stretch first of all. 
So start by rounding your spine, bringing yourself up towards the sky, pushing away from your hands, and then lengthening the spine. And if your back feels ready for it, you can move towards an extension. So this in yoga, they call the cat and the cow. And in Pilates, we call it the full cat stretch. And if your back doesn't like the extension here, you can just stop in a neutral position. There's no reason why you have to force it any further. And let's take two more. Rounding spine. And just one more time. Lengthen. And then come back to a neutral position and pause here. Balance on your left hand and reach the right arm out. Threading the needle all the way through. Resting your head. Feel free to move your right hand if you need to, but we're going to keep the hand connected to the floor. And then all we're going to do is bend and straighten the right elbow. So it's getting that little bit of a release along the back arm line here. So you'll recognize these same muscles from the release that we did in the last few classes with that ball just behind the shoulder or between the shoulder blade and the spine. So perhaps today it's actually feeling a little bit different from how it normally does, but we've been doing those releases. One more time. Stretching the arms, stay for a moment. Placing your left hand firmly to the ground, all the way up you come. Reach the right arm out, and then placing your hand down. Switch to the other side, left arm reaches, coming into a thread needle. And again, adjust your right hand position so that you feel nice and secure. And then we bend and we straighten the left elbow. Notice the opening all the way from the spine along the left side of your back, perhaps under the shoulder blade, and then along the back of the shoulder, the back of the arm, over the elbow towards the back of your wrist. Last one. And release. Placing the right hand securely to the ground and then reach all the way to the side and placing your hand down. Now you might need to walk a little bit forward. We're going to go into a plank position. So push it into the hand securely, extend one leg back, tuck the toes, then stretch the other leg back, tuck the toes, and then stay here just for a moment. So this is one of the most perfect exercises from us being able to get into the stabilizers and all the major joints of the body. Now let's lower the knees down, release the feet back, round our spine like a cat, and then stay here just for a moment and let's do that gentle trampolining. So this is now getting once again into the elasticity across the lower back, the lumbar fascia. Last one, start to come forward again with a rounded spine, and then stay here and lengthen your spine to neutral. Bring your shoulders forward so they are in line with your wrist. Now you need to firm up your abs and firm up your bum. You're going to bend the elbows and slowly come all the way down to your belly all the way down. So it's a lot of upper body strength and then we're going to stay here just for a moment. I want you to reach your right arm up to the side and turn your head and look to the left. Bend your left knee and then push with your hand and start to roll yourself all the way back. So look for the um, floor with that left foot. If it doesn't easily touch, then maybe <clears throat> put your, a block or a cushion under that left foot and then just see if you can relax your head. Relax through the shoulders. 
So it's quite a strong twist of the spine, a little bit of an opening along that left hip. And it's also that opening along the right shoulder and the right front arm line. Take a little breath. And slowly unwind, bringing yourself all the way back. And then stretch the arms, turn to look the other way, bend the right knee, and then push with your hands and start rolling yourself all the way back. And again, you might need to put a block underneath your foot, and the position you work in on the first side might not be the same as the side. Make any adjustments that you need, and then relax your head, connecting into your breath. Where does this register for you? Where is your awareness drawn to? And on your next breath, release, coming all the way to the front, and then stretching the leg out. Now we get to do the ball. <clears throat> so you're going to slip the ball underneath the front of the hip. It doesn't matter which side you do, because you're going to do both sides. And then just raise one hand on top of the other. And then just roll around on the wall for a little bit. <clears throat> so this can also be a very tender point. <clears throat> this is a hip flexor muscle really deep called the iliopsoas. And then just find a place where you feel that, yeah, I'm going to get some benefit if I release there. And then hold that position. Tuck your toes under. So I'm doing the left tip, so I'm tucking my left toes. I've got my abdominals and my glute heels active. And then on your breath, straighten that leg and push the heel away from you and releasing it down. And just keep doing that movement. So you are effectively gripping the fascia at the hip. And then by extending the knee straight, you're creating a little bit of a pull. So hopefully we start to release into that solar, so maybe the fascia that comes down the front of the leg or up into the belly slightly. Let's do one more. And release. Bring that foot relax out, take the ball out, and then place it on the other side. So again, one hand overlapping, roll around. Maybe the ball needs to go a little bit higher or a little bit more out or in on this side. Find the spot that works for you and then anchor yourself there. Tuck your toes under. And on your breath, pressing that heel away from you, but you're trying not to arch the lower back, yeah? You're keeping your lumbar spine and your pelvis stable. If you let your lower back arch, then you're not really effectively getting into the fascial release. Gentle rhythmic movements. Taking just a few more. One more time. And release, let your foot relax out, take the ball out, place it just beside you, and now placing your hands under your shoulders with the elbows poking up, you're going to push up onto your knees. Strong movement, and then just bringing those knees underneath you. Bring your hands a little bit closer together than you normally would, and you're going to extend the right leg back. Keeping the pelvis level, pick up your leg, remember not dropping into the lower back, and you're going to step your foot to the outside of your right hand, and then you're going to go back again, reach it long, and again, step to the side, and reach it out. So, this is quite deep flexion of the hip, and oftentimes we really struggle 
with being able to bring our foot all the way forward. And just observe, does it feel any different for you today, now that we have done that hip release? Step your foot and stay there. Give yourself padding on the left knee if you need. Right hand comes to the knee, coming all the way up. Left hand reaches up, so you're already creating tension in here. And now start to bring your hips forward. Bring yourself forward enough that you feel an opening in the hip with no strain in your back. So if that means you want to go back, then please go back. We're going to start to lean over to the side and release. Can you feel how it increases the tension in? And release. We're going to do two more. Using your breath, we're going to do one more time. And release. Bringing your hands down. Placing the palms of your hands flat. You might have to move your hips a little to the side. Stretch that right leg back. And then bringing the knee all the way in. Ready for the other side? Extend the left leg back. Bring that leg up. And now you're going to step to the outside of your left hand. And reach it back. So you are more than welcome to go slower or faster than me. This is the rhythm that works for me. This is the range that works for me. Feel that deep flexion in the left hip. And do you notice how you naturally have to connect your core when you do this? This is all part of that deep midline. We're going to do one more time. Step forward and stay there. Left hand to knee. Give yourself padding if you need. Right hand reaches all the way up. Pause in here and then bring your hips forward until you feel that you have an opening on that right hip. We lean to the side and release. And so it's quite a strong stretch all the way down the side body. And if you're tight like me, in that little muscle called the TFL, if you come from an anatomy background, this is TFL, which goes down into the IT belly. And release, hold it, placing fingertips to the ground, placing flat hands to the ground, Stretching your leg all the way back and then bringing that knee all the way in. Once again, we're going to go into a plank position. One leg back, other leg back. Take a moment here to feel the balance between the front lines and the back lines of your body. And now start pushing forwards and backwards on the toes. Notice how it changes the connections as you move your ankles and feet. One more. And then pause, lower your knees, release your feet, round your spine, moving your hips back, and let's do some gentle releases here. Find the place that works for you, but maybe you don't want the hands to move. You want to really have the arms extended long. Come forward again. Lengthen your spine to neutral. Bring your shoulders forward. And once again, you're going to bend the elbows and come all the way down to the ground. Stay here. Taking the ball, your new best friend, and you're going to place it just on the stern again. And bend the elbows on either side of you. Make your forehead rest to the ground. And then maybe just roll the ball slightly from side to side. Maybe you want to almost roll a little circle with your sternum on the ball. Just play around with it, see what feels good. But it's probably going to be a very small movement regardless. 
And you'll figure out pretty quickly if you need to move the ball as well, it doesn't feel okay for you. And then just pause in the center. We're going to close the legs together so your inner thighs are going to be working. Squeeze the ankle bones together and engage the bum cheeks gently. Start lifting your gaze up and then come up into a baby cobra as if you're going to nudge the ball forward and you want to make sure that you're stabilizing through the pelvis, legs together. And then release down and let your forehead lightly rest. And again, coming up into a baby cobra, nudging the ball forward with your breastbone, and then releasing all the way down. So remember, this is the fascia of the sternum, and now our chest muscles connect into it, and it's such an amazing way to open up the front of the body. One more time, rolling the ball forward, and releasing all the way down. And then just slip the ball out, place it beside you, and then just rest there. You can make the legs go. And just connecting into your breath. Notice all the space you have for your lungs right now, all the space you have for your heart. And on your next breath, separate your legs slightly, hands on your shoulders, elbows lifting up, and in one smooth movement, pressing up onto all fours, tuck your toes under, and then lift your hips, and then come into our downward facing dog. So if you need to move your feet forward like I do, you can walk forward a little bit, and then let's do that little headwind. Pushing both heels down towards the mat. And now stay there just for a moment. We're going to be transitioning to that deep gluteal stretch. So you're going to pick up your right leg and you're going to bring your knee towards your right wrist and let your shin connect to the ground. So you're supported. And then you start to walk the left leg back and swing your right foot diagonally across. If you need to put something underneath your bum for support, go for it. Get your knee in a happy place and then walk yourself forward so you can settle into that sleeping pigeon stretch. And finally, a little bit of a release along the deep right bum. Stay here for just a few more moments. And on your next breath, coming up onto your hands, firmly root into your hands, tuck your back toes under, and then lift your hips up so you're taking the pressure off that front leg and then step back and once again coming into that downward facing dog. Just pair the heels and then pressing both heels towards the ground. Just stay there for a moment. Notice if there's any difference between the two sides for you. And now pick up your left leg and then bring your left knee forward towards the left wrist. Connect your shin to the floor. And then slide the right leg back, swing your left foot a little bit across, and then settle yourself down into a place that feels comfortable for you. Not too comfortable, like this comfortable. And we breathe. So again, you probably recognize this whole concept from the yin yoga where you go into these poses and then you stay here and you breathe, but today we're not holding it as long as we would in a yin class. Stay here for one more moment. 
And then walk yourself up onto your hands, but this time we're not going to go into our downward facing dog. Roll over to sit on that left hip so that you can swing your feet all the way around. So, come and sit on the front of your mat with your knees bent. Make sure that you've got the ball just next to you so it's easily accessible. Arms out in front of you. Take a breath in. And exhale. Roll yourself down, feeling each vertebra connect to the ground. And then swing your arms back. Circle your arms around. And then roll back into sitting. And lifting tall. Give yourself any assistance that you need. And again, draw the tail under. Reach back. And then breathe. So it's quite a strong abdominal connection plus hip flexors need to work right now. One more time. Exhale, curl back. Control your movement. And big circle of the arms. But this time, just let your arms settle down beside you. And then walk your feet just a little bit closer in towards you. So let's go into three pelvic curls here. Take a breath in. Exhale, tilting the hips. Rolling up into your bridge, getting that lovely lift from the base of your pelvis. Stay for a moment. And then down to the spine you go. Softening from the back of the neck and release. Two more times, tilting hips. A little bit of a squeeze on the bum, and this should feel very open now after the hip flexor release work we did. Come down to the spine. And we're going to do just one more time. Tilting hips. Rolling up. Pause for a moment. Take the ball and then place it just under your sacrum so that as you roll down through your spine, you just allow your sacrum to step onto the ball, move it as you need to, and then taking your hands up to the side. Let's do a little bit of a rocking action from side to side of the ball. So remember guys, it's lower down than your lower back. So the sacrum is that little wedge of bone, that triangle shaped bone that sits just between your pelvic bones. So it's quite low down. And then say to yourself, find your balance, pick up your right leg, keep that knee just relaxed in towards you and see if you can slide the left leg out along the ground. So you're going to get a bit of an opening in that hip using that leg to anchor, and then flexing that right foot on your breath, just extend that leg up. And release. And again, extend. Just enough that you feel a little bit of a stretch in the hamstring, and you feel a little bit of work in the quadriceps, guys. Two more. And release. Or one more time. And release. Let your foot relax. Let your knee just flop where it is. Abdominal control as you bend the left foot, placing it down, and then placing the right foot to the ground. Now switch sides. Left knee in. Slide the right leg all the way out. That lovely opening along the hip. Flexing left ankle, and we go extend. And bend. Last two. You might notice that there's quite a bit of work in the lower abs as well. And release. Make your foot relax. Keep the leg where it is. Bringing that right foot onto the ground, stand on it. Now place the left foot down and then lift your pelvis 
Slide the ball up for a moment and then just rest there. Find a little bit of length along your spine. And you're welcome to close your eyes. Take a moment to feel the points of contact of your body to the ground. If your eyes are closed, you can blink them open and then do one pelvic curl. Exhale, rolling hips all the way up. Notice how it feels for you as you come up into your bridge. And then rippling down to the spine. Imprinting into the lower back. And releasing here. Bringing both hands up towards the sky. Turn the palms to face each other. And then scissor the arms. So, working at your own pace. Just focusing on synchronizing the right and left sides of your body. Energy through the fingertips. Two more. One more. Bring both hands straight up. And now interlock your fingers, place your hands underneath your head for support, and then just relax down. Maybe wiggle out your spine a little bit. And you're going to let the elbows just float, so you're creating a hammock for your head to rest into. And let's do a few chest lifts. Nod your chin. Exhale, slide your ribs towards your pelvis. Stay for a moment. And then releasing slowly down. Three more. And release. Two more. And release. Make sure that your lower back is happy. One more. Stabilizing pelvis. And Releasing all the way back. Take a moment to let your elbows push out. And then slip your hands out. Take the ball and place it again, like we did in yesterday's class, underneath the base of your skull. Place your hands onto your pelvis, your lower abs. And then just start nodding your head. Yes, yes, yes. And feel the ball rolling just along the vertebrae, the top of your neck, and perhaps over onto your skull a little bit. If you need to move the ball, go for it. And then center yourself, and then do a little bit of a side-to-side -side movement. Getting into all of those connections of your skull, to your spine, but sometimes we get very tight. And then say to yourself and hold it. Now just keep the ball there for a second. You're going to actually do a little bit of a manual release on your diaphragm. So just let your ribs pop up. Take your fingertips and just dip your fingers underneath your ribs, but gently, you don't want to hurt yourself. And just start to walk your fingers along the underside of your ribs, almost like you're pulling your ribs a little bit out towards the side. So I don't really have any issues with my diaphragm being tight, but some of us might feel this quite intensely. How does it feel for you? It's hard. It's hard. Yes, exactly. So what Mark is pointing out is that you're towards the center where that the bottom of the stream is, that's called the xiphoid process. That could be almost like a little bit of a vomit spot. <laughs> if you push it to too hard, it can be very intense. So just be soft and gentle. And then if you're feeling that this is really helping you, maybe you want to pause where you feel lots of tension for yourself and just hold it and then do a few deep breaths in and out. 
because it's easier to get our fingers underneath here as opposed to the bowl that we've got underneath our head right now. And on your next breath, just let your fingers slip out and then take the ball away. You can place it beside you and then interlock your fingers, hands behind your head. We're going to repeat our chest look and see how it feels. Nod your chin. Exhale, slide your arms forward. So we release the back of the neck and we release the diaphragm. And releasing gently down. Exhale. And releasing back. Has this created any kind of shift or release for you? Maybe, maybe not. Remember, we all have different tensions, strengths, weak spots. Just a chance for you to observe your own response. One more time. Exhale. And release. And coming all the way back. Once again, just leave your elbows, push your feet to the side. And then slipping your hands all the way out. So now you're going to hold onto the ball. Make sure that your feet are a little bit closer towards you than normal. And I'm going to do my left side first so you can see. I'm going to slip the ball underneath my left bum. So remember we did this seated yesterday for the performance. Now we're doing the same release, but we're going to be lying on our backs. So now I've got my left bum with the ball under it. So I'm going to stand on my right foot and I'm going to cross my left ankle over the knee right there. So already you should feel that there's a little bit of weight onto it. So now all you're going to do is a little bit of a rolling action from side to side. So this is a more gentle version of what we did yesterday. Because yesterday when you're sitting, you've got like a full body weight on the front. And then plus you're having to lift your leg up so you're working quite hard. So again, I want you to find your trigger point if you have one. I'm just assuming that everybody does. Find your trigger point and then see if you can settle there for three breaths in and out. And I'm using my right foot to monitor how much weight I'm putting down on the wall. So you might need to start with quite a bit of support on that right foot. And then as it eases up, you might be able to give a little bit more body weight to it. Just let yourself notice how it's feeling and then you adjust as you need. And then on your next breath, standing on that right foot, you're going to uncross that left leg, place that foot down, just slip the ball out, and then settle there for a moment. Holy smokes, my two sides feel completely different. Yeah, I feel like my whole, I almost feel like I'm rolling to my left side. Yeah. Did you also do the left arm? Yeah. All right, let's try the other side. So now, Slip it under the opposite bum cheek. And then picking up that same foot, cross the ankle over. And then do gentle rolling movements. And then find your little hot spot and settle there just for a moment and connecting into your breath. Using your arms, using your foot that's on the ground to help you monitor how much weight you're putting down on the wall. If you notice that it has released quite quickly, then maybe you just want to roll into another hot spot for yourself.
Taking one more inhale and exhale. Slowly bringing yourself back and crossing that foot. Take the ball out and then just allow yourself to settle for a moment. When you're ready, you can open your eyes if they were closed. Extend your legs out along the floor. You can squeeze your legs together. Bring your hands just out to the ceiling above you. You can point your toes up. Yes, it's completely up to you. We're going to do one roll up into sitting. So you've got to use abdominals. Curl forward, looking past your own feet. And then exhale. Come all the way over so you can rest your hand on the front of your legs. Take a little breath in. And then exhale, roll up into a seated position and lifting tall. So I'm going to move back a little bit so that I'm fully on my mat. We're going to go to the seated side. I'm just going to turn this way so I'm facing towards Marty. So you can pick up your uh, left foot, cross it over so you're standing there, flexing the right foot. Left hand goes behind you, right hand reaches up, and then start coming into a twist, hooking your elbow and guiding yourself to look behind you. And again, just like I did in the beginning, connecting into your breathing to facilitate the twist. So this is now a closed twist, whereas at the beginning we did an open twist. So this is a little bit more challenging. And then release. Now stay here, bending the right leg. You're going to bring that right foot just beside you and see if you can sit on your bum cheeks. If this hurts your knee, then just stretch your leg out again. Rest your hands on top of your left knee and then let your head come down. And again, after all the hip release work that we've done, you might find that it's easier for you to get into this position than it normally would. If you need to put uh, support under your left bum cheek, then feel free to do so. One more breath in and out. Coming all the way upright. First, you're going to unfold your right leg and then your left leg and give it a little bit of a shake. And now, Step your right foot up and over, right hand supports you, left arm reaches, and coming into a little bit of a twist. So you're flexing through that left foot, guiding yourself into a closed twist. And on your next breath, let yourself come back to the center. And now, bend in that left foot. And again, if your body doesn't like it, then figure out a position that works for you. Open up your hands on your knee and rest in your head down. One more breath in and out. And unfolding that left leg, stretching the right leg all the way out, giving yourself a little bit of a shake. And once again, just come into a seated cross leg position. If you want to put a little block underneath you, then feel free to do so. Hands resting lightly on your knees, and we'll just do a little bit of a twist. Feeling it out and come to the center and maybe do a little bit of a side bend. Come to the center and then pause for a moment, either lowering your gaze or closing your eyes.
and allowing the energy that's running along your spine to hold you upright with ease. Notice your breath traveling along the back of your throat, around your heart, and allowing your belly to softly respond. Bringing your awareness to your physical body and your energetic body. We'll take that one more deep breath in through the nose. Hold your breath at the top. Open your mouth and sigh. Blinking your eyes open. Giving your hands and your toes a little bit of a breath. Are you good? Ooh, Fantastic. Cool. Oh, let's hit the awesome. Okay.